Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. And uh, I also want to express my appreciation for the administration's attention to graduate medical education. I think it's not just a question of what it may do for regional economies, but the idea of us being able to train this next generation of medical professionals. Uh, we're talking about the cost of education here, and it's just, it's mind boggling to think about people graduating three and four hundred thousand dollars in debt. And it goes back to another issue, and I think this is something that I'm seeing when I'm talking to people in my district consistently. And you talk about increasing the ability for people to be able to pay for education. And we keep trying to find ways to redistribute dollars to do this. But let me ask you a question, because there's a significant investment in education by the federal government and by the policies of the federal government. Nonprofit institutions, for the most part. Tax incentives of various sorts. So with such a critical role, what is it that you are doing to hold down the increasing cost of education? You know, Congressman, I, I, most of that is not in my purview as, as Treasury Secretary, but I do have a deep interest in this and have worked across the administration. So I can tell you that there are things that we're doing to make it clear to families and to students what the cost of education will be, what their choices are, what the track record of schools is in terms of giving the kind of education that's likely to lead to the kind of uh, options that we all want for our children to have. And, uh, and I think it's very important that we not just deal with the student loan piece of it, but we also deal with the structure of how uh, education is marketed and made available to students. Students should see what their choices are. They should understand um, what the benefit of different options is. And they should also understand the cost of getting deep in debt. We have too many schools that are enrolling students and, and not keeping them even in to finish their degree. And those students end up in debt with no degree. Yeah, but so we have a great deal of schools which are stretching families who appreciate the very great difficulty which you identified in almost a market-based economy in which people are trying to get the best education they can for their children. Yeah. I mean, you know yourself, your Harvard University could be about $225,000, $30,000 for a family, and that's pre-tax income. So I go back again. Here, here's one of the problems, those very same institutions. You're talking to me about the responsibility on the parents and the families to be looking at these and making decisions. I'm asking about what responsibilities you're putting on the institutions themselves. I was trying to look for factors that may be influencing the cost of education. And you know, it, it, the cost for a private university has more than doubled since the 70s when I went there, and I suspect somewhere around the time you may have attended uh, college. For, for, for public universities, it proportionally, it's tripled. Now at the same time, and I, I was looking at this statistic, the, the amount of staffing has grown exponentially. In, in 75, there were 446,000 college professors and 268,000 administrators of all types. In the middle of the last decade, there were 675,000 professors and 750,000 administrators of various types. We've seen a dramatic explosion in this educational complex in which this bureaucracy has become a, a food frenzy and the f American families are paying for it. The very same people who you're looking at right now about who are, who, who are making those investments, oftentimes they're the ones that are dipping into their retirements to meet these exorbitant fees. So what are we doing with the leverage that we have to begin to compel these institutions which already benefit as nonprofit institutions to say that there's, if you want to have the benefit of, of government subsidized tuition and other kinds of things, then you must demonstrate the capacity. You're doing it in healthcare. Why aren't you doing it in education? Well, Congressman, by, um, by, by starting with transparency and empowering families, individuals to make decisions, um, that actually puts pressure in, uh, on the university system to take that very seriously. I agree with you, costs have been rising too rapidly. I think that it's not an easy thing to address because there's a kind of irreducible minimum of the number of people it takes to teach groups of 20 and 30 people. And even with the move towards, um, towards you know, high technology, ultimately contact with teachers still matters. 
Um, universities have become more complicated places. They have complicated a uh, variety of things they do. It, it's not my area, obviously, of, of, of current uh, expertise. The Department of Education is looking hard at these issues, and I'm sure they'd be f happy to follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Mr.